Greetings, friends. My name is Pavel Stermach, and I'm glad to present for you the new episode of our daily wrap-up series. Today we celebrate the Day of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, the holiday which 10 years ago was an analogue of such an International Women's Day, has now become a day when we remember all those who defended and defend our land, our state and our independence. Each of us has a relative, loved one or neighbour who went to defend the country. Every Ukrainian on this day remembers the people who gave their lives in this eight-year war with Russia. Believe me, most Ukrainians have a person whom we know personally and who died on the battlefield. Though mortar fire, through a sniper's bullet, through a rocket attack. And today we remember each of our soldiers whom we know personally, or even those whom we just accounted in a train car, bus, store or just on the street. Ukrainian soldiers are titans. Ukrainian soldiers are cyborgs. This is the army and it is ours. It is the army because not every group of armed people can be called an army. And not every army can be fully called its own. We civilians have so many epithets for our defenders that it, it will be difficult to list them all. Because they are not only descendants of Cossacks, we mildly call them cats. If you knew love with what they treat all living sins that surround them, how they take care of the animals that remained in the frontline cities, how they hug their relatives, firmly but so tenderly, as no one in the world can. And you know what else is surprising? Today people who are at the beginning of the year did not think that they would wear a military uniform are at the front and protecting Ukraine and the whole of Europe. Traditionally, I meet this day on the front line with our soldiers. Today we are in Donbass. The combat zone has become larger. The struggle is more difficult. The price is higher. But there is something that remains constant and still. Your courage, your endurance, your will, and therefore our freedom. Your steadfastness and therefore our independence. Your victory and our thanks for it. Your courage and our pride for it. Proud of all of you. In February and March, representatives of all professions joined the armed forces. Bankers and IT workers, journalists and locksmiths, teachers and drivers, bakers and waiters, tractor drivers and agronomists, energy engineers and even deputies. These people we are proud of. The armed forces of Ukraine is the backbone of Ukrainian statehood. It's most powerful symbol, a means of the national identity, thanks to which we easily distinguish who is a native and who is a stranger. Our warriors our shield, our sword, this is our pride and our victory. The armed forces are hope, protection and security. This is love, this is inspiration, because of them we simply live today. This is our happiness, health and life. It is the feats and achievements of the armed forces that inspire and they are the consolation in today's situation. We are them, they are us and we are the one. I don't know what I can do or say to express my gratitude. These are the most valuable people in our country. This is our everything. I know that side by side with me there are better ones. Soldiers than steel, fishers than fire, stronger than any element. The hearts of Ukrainian soldiers beat in unison with the hearts of millions of fellow citizens and all freedom-loving people of the world. Dear soldiers, sergeants and officers, workers and veterans of the armed forces, I am proud to serve my country side by side with you. Proud to be your commander-in-chief during this difficult time. I believe in each of you and in our victory. It seems to me that today holiday is more important than the New Year and other holidays this year. Only Victory Day will be more important than it, the date of which we do not know yet. But we know that our soldiers are working on it. In the meantime, we send SMS and messages with congratulations. The boys and girls from the front line promise to return alive and well and write that they are doing well. But can we imagine what they call doing well? Today, in addition to the Day of the Armed Forces, there is also a religious holiday, the Day of the Saint Nicholas, or Santa Claus in the Western tradition. And we know that our army was a gift to us, Ukrainians, for the new year. And this is the best gift that could be. Hungary has blocked the allocation of 18 billion euros of microfinance help to Ukraine in 2023. The Minister of Finance of Hungary, Mihai Varga, expressed his opinion to the adoption by the European Council the amendments regarding the allocation of 18 billion euros. In particular, the EU member state opposed amendment to the long-term financial legislation, which must be adopted unanimously. 
However, despite this, Ukraine expects further European pressure on Russia. And as one of the steps, we expect Russia to be recognized as a sponsor of terrorism in all European countries, as was done in the European Parliament before. Our journalist spoke with member of the European Parliament, Witold Waszczeskowski, about the consequences of such a decision. I suggest you to listen to what the former Minister of Foreign Affairs of Poland says. Well, actually this resolution is a directive uh, to member states, because it's up to member states to implement this resolution and impose uh, additional sanction. Uh, this is not for, for the Commission. The Commission doesn't have such authority. But this is a first step, uh, for instance, to impose sanction on political elite in Russia, political parties, and those uh, business people, uh, oligarchs, who sponsor these parties. And this will be the first step not only to freeze the money which were obtained from the criminal activities sponsoring the, the state of sponsoring terrorists, but this will open the possibility to confiscate this money which are frozen right now in many Western countries. So I would say this is the beauty of this resolution because it gives our members the instrument to reach to the money, to the assets and properties of these Russian oligarchs. Well, it depends on the speed of uh, countries' legislatures, of course. In many cases, it needs to adopt the law. Some, sometimes it takes only for the persecutors to, uh, to create special instrument to, uh, to chase for this uh, money. Sometimes weeks, sometimes months, but this is not going to happen just overnight. Well, European Union, I mean the member states and European institutions do not recognize the occupation and do not recognize these two people, so-called people's republic. So this is a consequence that we do not, uh, we do not accept and recognize decision taken by this to entities and by Russia on these occupied territories. So this will help, of course, Ukraine, because we still consider these occupied territories as a part of sovereign Ukraine. Well, I would, I would say it's rather more than symbolic. It's a pragmatic step because it means that these people uh, having even the Russian passport issued on these territories would be not recognized in Europe as a legitimate uh, citizens of these entities or Russia. So this passport is simply invalid for travel abroad. Well, I think that the most important for Ukraine is to open the path to membership of the European Union. A few months ago, the European Union granted Ukraine the status of candidacy. Now we have to wait for, for official uh, start of negotiation. But this is one path. Parallel to this, we can open step-by-step -step access for Ukraine to the European Union. We can open agencies, we can open different sector policy for Ukraine, we can grant them status for the single market, just like for Norway and uh, Switzerland. Both of these countries do not belong to the European Union, but they can make benefits and profit from, uh, uh, from uh, working with us on the 
uh, single market. The additional step would be to bring Ukraine, for instance, to three cis initiative, which is about uh, energy market and uh, transportation. This is very important for Ukraine to be connected to the European network of roads, uh, railroads, communication. It's important for export of your goods, your grain, oil and other uh, commodities. It cannot be obstacle, it cannot be excuse that because of war we cannot uh, continue negotiation and bring Ukraine closer and closer to European cooperation. We have an example of East Germany who was taken to European Union. We have an example of divided Cyprus and the Greek part of Cyprus was uh, brought to the European Union. So we can continue uh, successful cooperation with Ukraine, which eventually to uh, full membership. It was interviews of the member of the European Parliament, Witold Waszczykowski, about the decision to recognize Russia as a country sponsor of terrorism. It's already winter outside, which means that Christmas and New Year holidays will soon be here. And today I would like to talk about the musical symbol of the winter holidays, the song Carol of the Bells. You may not know, but it also is Ukrainian, and its text is a holiday song familiar to our region, a Shedrivka. That is why we call this song Shedrik in our country. This video was recorded at the Carnegie Hall in New York, and for a reason. After all, 100 years ago it was first heard in the USA in this very concert hall. And now it is a symbol of the new year almost all over the world. And it also is a Ukrainian, Mykola Leontovich. This is not just a Ukrainian, but a Ukrainian who was killed by the Russians. An NKVD, Soviet punitive organization officer, came to his father's house and asked to spend the night in the middle of a cold winter night and then robbed the house and killed the composer himself. At the same time, the report in which the circumstances of Leontovich's death were recorded were classified, and all the details became known only in the 1990s. The authorities of the USSR, or rather the Russian authorities, hit their involvement in this murder. Although we Ukrainians know that Moscow and St. Petersburg have always tried to suppress everything Ukrainian, during the time of the Russian Empire and the Soviet Union there were dozens of decrees banning or restricting the Ukrainian language, and now the Kremlin dares to declare that Ukrainian language does not exist at all. However, as Alexander Skirsteins, a member of the Seima of the Republic of Latvia, wrote, there is no Russian nation, and the Russian language is a dialect that arose when the Mongol Tatars tried to speak Ukrainian in Twitter. After all, Russia has tried all its time either to oppress Ukrainian culture or simply appropriate it. To mention at least Mykola Hohol, or Ivan Vazovsky, or Ilya Repin. They were all born on the territory of Ukraine and are Ukrainian creators. However, ask an educated person in the world what culture they representatives of are, and they will tell you Russian. But how can Repin, who painted Ukrainian villages and Cossacks, be Russian? Is it possible that Hohul is a Russian who wrote about Ukrainian life in Sobozhanshina, the greatness and power of the Dnieper, of the life of the Cossacks? Talented Ukrainians in Tsarist Russia had two options, to imitate a Russian or to disappear into oblivion or exile, as was at the case with Taras Shevchenko. But the Russians tried to win over not only people. Since the 18th century, the majority of the archaeological finds on the territory of Ukraine were taken to St. Petersburg or Moscow and already there were presented as part of the history of Russia, not Ukraine. But talk to talk about if even the same Russia 
was introduced by Peter I in the 18th century instead of the more accurate name Muscovy. Our first coins of Volodymyr the Great, Svetopolk Yaropolkovich, there are pieces of silver on which trident are depicted, the coat of arms of Ukraine. 95% of these coins were found on the territory of Ukraine from the 19th century to the present day. 95% of the coins were found on the territory of Ukraine, but only 10% of the finds are in Ukraine now, because as soon as there was a piece of silver which was declared the first Russian coin under the USSR, they were exported from Ukraine. All this is done in order to feel the catastrophic lack of the hair model, because they called themselves the hairs of Rus, but they had no object of Rus left. One could say that in the USSR Ukrainian creators became freer, but this is not so. After all, the flower of the Ukrainian nation, the Ukrainian intellectuals were massacred in the 1930s. Hunger, hard labor, gulags and persecution. We even have the concept of the executed renaissance of Ukraine in the 1930s. It is about those people of culture who died as a result of the work of the NKVD punitive service. These are people who could develop Ukrainian and world culture, but instead became just another victims in the list of Ukrainians destroyed by Russia. Just imagine what Ukrainians could do if our compatriots are the authors of such hits as Carol of the Bells or the film Zemlya, Land, which in 2015 was recognized by UNESCO as one of the five world films in history. That concludes today's video. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for future videos. Subscribe to UATV English and goodbye.